actually a semi-retired blue play. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Inside Pools production of the Ultimate Timball Championships. We're here at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Frisco, Texas. We're here to watch the finals of between Jeremy Jones and Mike DeShane. It's a race to 12 finals. I'm J.R. Calvert. Joining me here in the booth is Billy and Cardone. Billy, welcome. Well, how are you doing, J.R.? I'm doing just fine, just yeah. fine. Well, anyway, you know, I figured I'd come down and watch the tournament. I'm living so close to the tournament, you know, uh, I live in Dallas. This is Frisco, which is only about 20 to 25 miles from where I live. I was here for a brief, brief moment yesterday, watched a couple of matches. I watched Jeremy play a match against Sean Putman. He seemed like he was playing quite well, and all of a sudden he's in the finals of the tournament, you know. And I really like the way Jeremy plays. Uh, you know, he's a real strong player. Uh, very sound player, very methodical type of a player. You know, and if you're going to beat Jeremy, you're going to have to beat him. He's not going to really beat himself. He's not going to give you anything, actually. No, he's a real smart player. Real smart player. Look what he's doing right now. He's going through the discussion with our head referee, Ken Schumann, about the shot clock and the ranking. Yeah, he wants to make sure that he uh, is in total understanding of everything, you know. So he doesn't make any errors at the table or whatever. No cost of a match or game or a match or the tournament. Yeah. Well, <laughs> because this is the finals. This is the finals. This is this is not when you want to have a lesson taught to you somehow. No. Uh, <laughs> well, I forgot about that rule. Uh, why didn't I? Oh, yeah, no, it's not the time. It's going to cost you twenty thousand. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Well, Mike Mike Deshane. Uh, you know, I really don't know him that well. Uh, he's one of the younger players on the tour, yeah. but uh, nonetheless effective because he's playing really well. I think he, he done real well in the New England area prior to coming here. He won a tournament or two over there, didn't he? Yeah, he's been finishing high. Uh, last two years, he's been on fire. They call him Fireball. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he just has a massive break, great ball-making capabilities, moves real well. He has all the tools. I mean, he's somebody that you would expect to be here. This is a grueling uh, format with three days almost of continuous play. Right. And uh, what do we have? We have two young guys. Well, Jeremy's not so young, you know. But Mike DeShane's in his 20s. And I yeah. think Jeremy's in mid 30s or yeah. closer to 40. Exactly. You know. Well, I, uh, I still consider that young. You know, I yeah, well, I, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Schumann and Zach Ballas.
Hearing all the shutters going off here, everybody getting those photos of the lag. <laughs> I think uh, Mike has won it by about an eighth of an inch, it looked like. Well, Jeremy, living in Corinth, you can see that there's a lot of supporters here. And when they announced him, and uh, he got a little more of a, you know, applause than uh, Mike DeShane. But Mike DeShane, you know, was a very confident player. Yeah, the little I've seen of him, uh, I've, I've noticed how confident he is, you know. But he, he, and that's what you really need to have when you uh, when you compete at this level. You have to have a lot of confidence, and he's certainly not short of that, you know. Definitely. I like the way he plays. He hits the ball really well. He's, you know, you know, tremendous shot maker. Big break, like you said before. You know, I noticed how well he broke the balls, and he breaks them as well as anyone. Like the shape. <laughs> and uh, we we did a little promo video with him about a year ago, and. Uh, he was hitting some of the breaks, and we had the camera on the end of the table, and he was putting the ball four feet in the air on command just and just crushing the balls. Just a lot. Now, it looks like they're having a discussion about the, the rack. Now, they're using the magic rack. You uh, familiar with the magic rack? Uh, not totally. i just seen it advertised on uh, on the Internet a few times, you know, and this is actually the first time I've ever seen it used in a tournament. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. And I, I kind of like it because you get the same rack all the time. There's, you know, it's, uh, there's a little problem with the balls rolling over it after they're broken. But you know what? That's fair for one as it is for the other. So therefore, that's a wash. Right. So you really can't complain about that. Right. But it, what I like about it is it keeps the rack area divot free. There's no pound. So you've got a true rolling rack. And if they would have some sort of a I'm marking on the table where to position the rack part of, before they rack them, then you would get that consistency of the same rack every time. You know? exactly. So yeah, I think that's good. I saw the Diamond people, Paul Smith from Diamond, uh, went around and had a, a ruler down, marked down to the millimeter where he was putting everything. So uh, he mm -hmm. tried to make sure every table was exactly the same, and he set a standard where they would be able to repeat that rack over and over. Well, so as far as a traditional way of racking with a rack, I think it's definitely an improvement. I, I don't really think that. In the meantime, this is game number one. Race to 12 for the uh, Ultimate Challenge Championship. That's pretty good. Jeremy Jones, huh? Jeremy Jones. And both these players, uh, interesting enough, uh, have lost weight. Remember, Jeremy was a little bit more heavier set. Mike was also heavier set. Both these players, I think, uh, a lot healthier. You know, you're always a little healthier when you lose the weight. And this grueling format, I think, really helped. That helped them get to this point. So, well, I agree. And not only that, it just shows you what kind of a, you know, how much of a discipline both of these players have. You know, they had, they're very disciplined players. Well, anybody that's tried to shed more than three or four pounds. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I know it's tough, yeah. <laughs> Okay, it looks like he's uh, overran his mark slightly, but uh, nevertheless does have a shot in the corner pocket. Be well positioned in the upper, near the upper right-hand corner. Four ball adjacent to that, in between the uh, eight and the three, lays the four. I think he just has to roll this in with a little bit of left, and he'll be fine. Okay, he wants to make sure he, he gets on the, the the professional side of the three, which he's hit the five and he's fallen short of the mark. He would have liked to have gone over a little bit further, which would have given him a natural angle, going from the three to the four. Now he has a little bit of work here. Well, I think he can pull it off with a little bit of high inside as long as he doesn't overstroke this shot and create too big of an angle off the three. And I think he's back in line. A little bit further than what he wanted to be. And it always helps to be tall, like Jeremy. Like he can reach this type of a shot quite easily, as you can see. We had Earl Strickland playing in the event earlier in the week, and Earl brought out uh, what looked to be maybe a 72-inch cue to 75-inch cue that he was playing with. You're allowed to see him bring out anything. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't surprise me to see him bring out anything. 
Well, he he was playing real well. Uh, but I think he was using that because he was on a 5x10 and he had to stretch for so many balls, you know? <laughs> He's really an innovative type of a guy with all the uh, straps and weights and stuff. I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, I'm kind of partial to the Darth Vader days when he was using the... He can hear me? Yeah. This isn't really, really where he wanted to be. He didn't want to end up here. If you notice, the cue ball and the eight ball sort of parallel to one another, uh, meaning that, you know, playing position for the nine from this position is going to be difficult. He's going to have to have excellent speed of the cue ball on his shot. This is not easy. Right. <sighs> now he's, I guess he's favoring the left-hand side here. This is not easy. I mean, he's going to run right across that line of position quickly. That's why he has to have excellent control of the speed of the cue ball. A hair of inside by rolling it. And he's a one pocket player. It's caused a miss. Yeah, he was in a real tough spot there. Not that he couldn't have handled it, but uh, certainly wasn't where he wanted to be. Now, you, are you a proponent of the theory that the guy that wins the first game wins 60 to 65 percent of the matches? I don't know exactly what the percentage is, but uh, I kind of like the guy that wins the first game. Uh, I think I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I really like the guy who wins the last game. I was going to say the last <laughs> game is the guy that I like. <laughs> Still in my lines. <laughs> first game of the uh, of the match in the finals and sometimes you know you have to you know you have to feel your way through that rack and get the speed of the table and uh, DeShane he played a match right before this match so he's he has more of a feel of the speed of his of his table right now than Jeremy Jeremy was resting but uh, I think Jeremy's going to get it together no question about that because there's a lot of uh, talk about who would you rather bet on who do you think the favorite would be the player that played a match prior to going into the finals or the player waiting in the hot seat coming in I, I favor the player waiting I would rather much be the player waiting the rest more rested player and I feel that, uh, that if, if you, if you uh, kept track of that you would see that the player that was rested won a much higher percentage of the matches in the finals Oh, I agree, and I think that uh, that guy that's rested, he gets to mentally prepare. He he knows what, that he's going to be the guy in the finals. The guy that's playing his way there it had an up-and-down, maybe grueling match. Exactly. He doesn't even have time to prepare. And he's right. Like, right, right it's much more, much more taxing on a player that has to play one match after another to get to the finals than it would be, obviously, for the player that's rested right. and coming into the finals. Big factor there you really have to consider. Well, that's a difference. Uh, like a lot of weekend tournaments, they, they play you so right back to back to back as opposed to a pro tournament that might take on four or five days of activity that lets you prepare, take hours to prepare, maybe a day to prepare. And the pros really know how to take advantage of that time, too. Mm -hmm. Now, Jeremy breaks the balls quite well, but it doesn't have the velocity that DeShane has. But if you notice how to restruct the balls, the one ball, how nicely the cue ball came back, certainly indicating that he hit the one ball solidly, and that's where he gets his action off the break by the by the solidness of the hit. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And the ball spread pretty well. He, I, I think he can get back in line here after he makes the one, Just simply going one rail. Now he's going to be have to be careful here. I do believe. He made two balls on the break to two and to three. So the four ball will be the ball he'll need to play position for off the one. Now the five ball is in the center of the table, and it's a ball that may be in the path of his position when he comes back down the table playing position for the four. He's got to be careful here. This first shot is going to be a, a crucial shot for him in this, in this rack. So you're going to shoot it and spin to the rail, just like that. Now he played the safe side of the five, so making sure he didn't get behind it. Now he's going to have to, I don't know, I can't really see from our vantage point what kind of an angle he has there. 
it's a hair of an angle. I think he's going to just try and get very close to straight in on the five. You see, he had to go around the table. You see, he had to go around the balls. I was well, kind of curious time, to see if, if that's what he had to do. Yeah, I, I like that a lot of times, too. If you start to get a hair of an angle instead of trying to roll and take a chance and you don't know how much it's going to take off on you, just stroke it around the table. Now he would like to fall on the on the bottom side of the seven, mate, cutting it to the right into the pocket. That'll give him a natural angle to drop nicely for the eight. Very close to a straight in shot. Mm -hmm. I think he's that's workable. I think he can punch it over. I don't know if the, if the nine passes the ten in the lower right hand corner. If it doesn't, he's going to have to have a nice angle on the eight, then to go across table for position on the nine. So he has to make sure he doesn't get careless there. And this one here, I usually commit to going to the second rail. That helps me develop a line, and I can tell that I'm above the nine or straight in. And it'll probably increase the accuracy of the shot as well. Right. I think with a little firmer speed always increases the accuracy. So Jeremy uh, finally has got himself in real good line here. So this is game number two. Uh, Jeremy looking to tie up the match one game apiece. And it stemmed from his ability to break the balls nicely and get a shot on that one. Exactly. And he controlled that rack. He controlled it. Uh, very little uh, after the break shot that he didn't that there was a question about and just like that Jeremy Jones has taken advantage of the alternating break format and put a point on his side I kind of like alternating break I've always been a proponent of the alternating break format uh, a lot of people disagree with me. They think that it's it's not a fair trade-off. They want to see a lot of racks being run. I myself much ra I rather watch closer matches. I think the alternating break is more conducive to a closer match. You know, you know that's that's what I believe because it's hard for you to run away from your opponent playing alternate break right. than it is playing winter break. Winter break, you know, it, it's unfair uh, in a sense to play winter break because you can be totally prepared to play but never get the opportunities that you're entitled to because your opponent keeps making balls on the break. Say for instance, you're playing on the table where you're getting the corner ball on the break, playing nine balls, you know. So I'm totally prepared to play. I put my hours in, and, you know, and I'm entitled to it. And in the meantime, I don't get the opportunities I'm entitled to, and that's how I lose. That's, I don't think it's fair. Yes, I like the alternate break format. I like it too. Look at tennis. Everybody admits the serve is an advantage. Oh, absolutely. Shane hitting the break with a little more velocity. Uh, I think he lost the cue ball a little bit there, hitting the side of the one. That's why the cue ball went to the rail. Right. He was able to put down a ball, but he hasn't come up with a shot on the one, a good shot. Yeah, he, uh, he can hit it, but it, let's face it, he's more than likely putting the one on the bottom rail and playing safe by taking the cue past the four ball somehow. Well, he wasn't able to hook him. Now Jeremy's going to step to the table. He's not going to have a good shot on the one. Really can't get aggressive here, I don't believe. Yeah, I think, uh, especially with the two, kind of, it, it somewhat kind of has him in an awkward bridge position. And I think we're going to see a safety. But in, in the meantime, um, from the position that he's in, I don't really see any type of a safety available for him either. You know, he, he might be better off just trying to cut it in. I don't know. You know, it's a real tough spot he's in here. I don't see a good safety. And, you know, I'm if trying you, to see if you, don't have, you know, if you don't have a good safety, and you're probably just as well just to go after the ball. You know, because he can pocket the one if he cuts it thinly enough. It's not, you know, it's not an easy shot, but the safety isn't either. <laughs> So, you know, what it, this is what you call a dilemma here. This is Let's take a, a look conundrum. At Let's see what he does here. Oh, 
Well, I'll tell you what, I think it worked out pretty good for him. He, he positioned the cue ball behind the seven, and I don't believe the Shane can hit the one. Uh, I'm not quite sure. From his vantage point, it's hard for me to see if he can. Let's take a look at how he feels about it with his body language. He's got the jump cue out? Yeah, I think he's. we're going to see a jump. And this is a good shot because he's pretty straight in. Well, he wasn't able to uh, put the one down. Want to stay on the bottom. I think he's got he's getting a little straighter on the two than he wanted to. You see, he wanted to position that cue ball closer to that bottom cushion, which would give him a natural angle to drop for the four ball. And he wanted to get actually on the other side of the four ball because the five ball's position in this end of the table. So therefore, he's you know he wanted to play two shots ahead there with the angle he's left himself with. He's created a little bit of a problem here. I think he he doesn't necessarily have to get on the other side now, but uh, it would have been best to go one Well, one you know, I mean, that's, yeah. that's yeah. the correct way of getting out. You know, yeah. you want to get down this end of the table for them on the, on the, on the foot rail for the five ball, or near the foot rail for the five ball, cutting it to your left. Now he's got to do a lot of extra, tra extra traveling here. So, you know, when you, when you travel extra. Well, look at this. He's, he's found the keyhole. Yeah, Danny DiLiberto says that's field goal position. <laughs> Well, I heard Danny's doing better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's doing well. I talked with him a couple of days ago. He's in Seattle right now uh, visiting some, I think, family members. And uh, he's going to be entering the uh, one pocket event that Mark Griffin is putting on in Las Vegas in May. And he's really thrilled about that. He says he's playing really well. He says, I don't think I can win it. And I said, I, I agree. But <laughs> 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 no, I didn't say that. <laughs> So he called you up for a pep talk, it's <laughs> I see. <laughs> Very interesting uh, position now. Yeah, he's got he's to do a little work here. I don't know exactly how, how steep the angle is, if he can hold it for position for the nine on the side or what. Or maybe he's going to go two cushions around and play position for the nine in the same pocket as he shoots the eight in. <laughs> nice speed there. That was really crucial for him to hit that shot with good speed. And he certainly did. I did. Nice shot. That was a great shot. It really was. Rolled that one in. Mm-hmm. break the ball, that's really nice if you can win a game and then have the break for that next game, you know. That's that means you broke serve. Exactly. I was going to say, it's just like break and serve in tennis. Uh -huh. so that's always a good feeling to have. Yeah, it is. Well, the funny thing about the difference there is you break somebody's serve, you may have, you know, done six volleys, so to speak. Here, it's you break somebody's serve. It can be done with just one bad break by a player. It scratches or doesn't make a ball and leaves you an easy out. So it, it can happen very quickly here. Why you need to have such a great break. You can't make yourself vulnerable in an alternating break format. No, you know, if you fall behind on an alternating break format, uh, it's very hard to... Uh, to come back, you know, if you, the deficits are harder to are harder to overcome. Sure. In, with this type of a format. Okay, now he didn't break him as well this time as he did the last time, right. and he allowed the cue ball to get away from him, and he didn't really hit him with velocity, so he didn't get much action off that break because of uh, how he struck the one ball. He didn't strike it solidly. Yeah, he, well, what happened there was he put his cue ball, let it go, and it got into the traffic zone. <laughs> <laughs> it just started getting pushed around the table. 
He's jumping up like he's going to hang her. What does he have in mind? He's going to hit the, uh, cut the 11, one ball to the right side and the cue ball behind the seven, possibly. That's about what I was saying. Good shot. I don't know how much of this one Mike can see, if any. Even if he can see the one, uh, I don't know where he's going to go with it because I don't know if he can see the left side of it. Well, he was able to hit it on the left side, and, but he really didn't create the distance between the two balls that he wanted to. Let's see, the three ball will be the next ball. I believe it's positioned down the, by the foot rail there. So mm -hmm. this shot here is a real big shot. He's got to make sure he hit this accurately because he's going to have to elevate here and it's going to lose some accuracy on this shot. This is a big shot. Nicely struck ball. I kind of, nice. yeah, I kind of like the way he played that. See, a lot of players may have tried to finesse that with a, with a soft draw. I don't think that's the correct way of doing it because you lose too much accuracy. I, I like him going right toward the three ball because if you hit the three ball, you end up with a shot. If you miss it and go around it, you may end up with another shot, right. like he just did. Right. So therefore, but the main thing is you stay in control of the table. You increase the accuracy of the shot. You stay in control of the table. That's a smart way of playing. Smart way, exactly. Agree. I concur, Dr. Cardin. Yeah. Well, the seven looks like it goes by the eight. Even if it doesn't, uh, it will go on the side. Yeah, but the position of the six is not a real good lead ball to the seven, even if it doesn't go in the corner. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that you got to start preparing for now. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Jeremy hasn't looked at it yet. So or therefore, he has, and it was just not a worry at all. So therefore, if the seven doesn't go in the corner, then he must play good position on the five to get the right position on the six to drop for that side pocket that may be, you know, right. hard to attain to get that good angle to get dropped for the side. So therefore, the position of the five is the key if, in fact, the seven doesn't go in the corner. He ran into the nine. Yeah, okay, it obviously does go in the corner because, you know... Uh, or he would have tried to get on the other side of this line to the uh, six. I, th I think he would have tried to get closer to the six, because, uh, but, but he, 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 he settled for a distant shot on the six, indicating to me that the seven passes, because all he does need to do is pocket the six and take the shot on the seven. Sure. Now, I don't know how much pocket he does have, but... Uh, He's got to cut the ball to his left, so therefore, if he doesn't have a full pocket, this is a pretty touchy shot. Exactly. I like to get a little bit closer than this, but this will do. Well, he ran into the nine there, precluded him from playing real good position on the seven. So therefore, he had to take what the table offered him. Right. See, touchy shot there. He, he, uh, evidently, he didn't have a full pocket. No. That would have given him a two-game two game lead in the match, three games to one. But it wasn't meant to be, I guess, with Shane at the table. Watch out. <laughs> wow, that was uh, he may actually un have unexpected a, there. Huh? Yeah, he may actually have a bank shot. He's already turned down the idea of the bank shot. Well, he may, may, he may be uh, parallel to the nine ball uh, where he can't bank it. Well, he looks like he is banking it. Well, he was fortunate to have that nice angle that he did for that bank. Because of the closeness of the of the cue ball to the nine ball, he better be laying well on that on that bank, or else uh, he would have had a big problem. Yeah. But he was fortunate to have had that good bank angle, and he breaks her. <laughs> <laughs> Not it up 
at two games here. Well, just a few errors, but nothing really major. I don't think anybody's uh, having us confused on how they got here. Both these players are showing already early in the game why they are in the finals. Referee Ken Schumann is head referee Ken Schumann and co-tournament director, I believe, is setting them up with the setting the balls up with the magic rack. It's kind of interesting. You just let the rack there when you break. The template is on the table right now. Jones two. And using the template, you're assured to get uh, a tight rack. Is that correct? Using the template, you're assured to get a tight, a tight exactly. rack. Exactly, it pushes them all together. Good. That's good. Does he have a pocket for the one? I know he doesn't have a lower right-hand corner because the three ball precludes him from pocketing one in that pocket. Now on the other side of the table, I don't know if he has room past the uh, the two ball to pocket the one. Right. Just got an update from our ProPool.com stats, folks. And they have Jeremy Jones shooting an 882. And Mike is still shooting a 1,000. No unforced errors. Well, then he's not need shooting a thousand any longer. No, not any longer. So I guess that's going to be got that snuck that in there right before he did it. Now, I do believe the bank goes cross side on the one. Fortunately, the two balls right there for position. If he makes the bank, I do believe there's room past the ten to pocket the two. He might even be able to clip the three on the way in. I'm not sure that there's a carom off the two for the ten. I don't think he'd be playing for that. Now, if there's a carom, he's certainly laying well for it. Sure is. Okay. Uh, now he's going to have a decision to make here, because if the two passes that uh, you know the, the four ball position by the side pockets are a little curious, the position of the four. I wouldn't. If the if the ten ball is a good billiard, I definitely would take it now. Sure. Which he's done. And he made quick work of that rack. And now he's in the same position that he was the last time he broke the balls, okay, with a game lead and the break. Right. And uh, I won't say that he squandered that opportunity, but it just didn't turn out the way that he wanted it. You mean the last time he had that opportunity? Yeah, exactly. Well, I think he did. <laughs> <laughs> You're being very <laughs> generous with your... <laughs> hey, he might watch this later. You're he's bigger nice, than me. You're too nice of a guy. You know? <laughs> That's nice. You know, Jeremy's he, a great guy. Well, he's a great guy, but uh, nevertheless, he squandered it. He squandered it. He'd be the first one to say that he, <laughs> he missed the seven. He misused that opportunity. <laughs> the he didn't take advantage of it. The update now from the ProPool.com guys, and they wanted to read in on that, was that uh, Jeremy Jones is now shooting 889. And the chain has dropped down to 846. One miss gave him 840 from 1,000, 846. That's I would imagine that's... I think they did a retabulation there. They might have <laughs> held off on one or two. Let's see if he breaks him any better than he did the last time he broke the ball. Let's take a look at the cue ball. No, he hit miss hit no, it again. He miss hit it again, and yeah, he's not getting the square hit on the one that he did the first rack. That first break, was and he didn't make a ball on the break, by the way, because of that, or mo you know, possibly because of that. Exactly. He's not getting the action that he needs to get. Boy, these balls are spread nicely. Nothing close to one. All balls are spread nicely from from another ball. 
two bolt position in the center of the table, three bolts that are right at the foot spot. I think he's about perfect there. And it was very crucial for him to get good position on the two ball because the two ball was a difficult ball to get, a, you know, to uh, to play good position for because it was positioned in the center of the table. And you want to, especially if you're going to shoot it in the side, you have to have a good straight end angle on the on the ball to hold it for the three. Right. You know, it was important for him to get a good shape on the two, which he did. Right. That was the uh, the key to this rack, I think, position on the two. Because if you notice, everything else is laying pretty, pretty good here. It looks like you threw them out for practice. You wanted that uh, confidence building run out that you do where you loosen your stroke up at the beginning of the day. That's how spread out they look. Nothing's near a rail. <laughs> you know, everything's, you know, a, a diamond and a half from the other balls. He should make easy work of this. You know, this is a, this is not easy here. He wants to make sure he's got a little bit of an angle on the six. And I think he's got enough of an angle, a little flat, but uh, he'll be able. He's close enough to the ball to hit it accurately and forge it to the cushion. Now he's certainly back in real good line now. He'll end up playing the eight in the corner to his right, or at our right, and then the nine in the side. Well, he went for the other corner. Hmm. I like playing position for the other corner. That way it's a natural angle to come down for the eight, nine on the side. But maybe the speed of the shot didn't lay real good for that. Natural angle to the rail here will just bump it off. and play. This I think I could handle. I mean, at the table. I know I can handle it from up here. <laughs> I, I don't know. I still miss balls in commentary, so, you know, how bad did I play? Yeah, you're really dogging it there. <laughs> it looks like to me that it's, uh, it's not good to break the balls because the breaker really hasn't won any games lately. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I start to think about that. But yeah, you can't pass the break and alternate break, can you? I don't think anyone would if they could. Because it's been programmed into everyone's mind, brain, that it's an advantage to break the balls. Exactly. So if I was to come up to someone and say, listen, statistics say that it's not an advantage, you think they would listen to you? Hell no. Then wonder what your angle is. Are you mate? <laughs> you friends with the other guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, a uh, little shift in the stats here. Jeremy is now shooting an 889, and Mike is shooting a 913. Let's see if he hits these balls. Wait, 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 you got a chat going on here? Talking to wow. They can talk. A very square hit and uh, three balls on the break. Dead square. Not the greatest well, when, position. When, when, uh, when the chat's available, if there's something interesting on the chat, do you bring it up to us? And maybe someone wants to ask a question? or. Well, you have to address what the question you're asking is, not just answer the question. But, yeah, but if you would bring up the question, then I could address it. Yeah, well, or JR it's could. That's not really a part of your job, though, is it? Then why aren't you doing your job? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Billy giving our engineer, producer, Elvin Nelson, a hard time, as I like to do myself. <laughs> oh, hey, 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 hey. That's and he a, comes back with the Masters. Low singer. blow there. Well, Billy, if you're nice to him, he's going to give you one of his bobblehead dolls. He has a limited edition Alvin Nelson bobblehead doll. And actually, who are the bobbleheads? The, yeah, the, just, I know what they are, but aren't they certain heads? Like, you're, is you're, are you a head of one of the bobbleheads? No, no, just just Alvin. <laughs> I'm not famous enough. Uh -huh. yeah, a JR bobblehead. <laughs> Put that on your dashboard. 
Or on the end of your pool table when you're playing. I mean, come oh. on. You know, who wouldn't want one of those? Okay, now he doesn't uh, like where he's ending up here. Well, he has a chance to, to bank this four towards the top rail and run the cue down to where he's pointing at right now with his stick. It's, it's natural, but it's not, e not an easy shot because he has to make the four ball go so far before he doesn't sell out or possibly leave a keyhole. You know, I think that he's, he would be better served if he would just go ahead and play a good, solid safety. Now, he's playing the four-ball cross-corner. What's, what's going to happen here, possibly, is that he's going to divide his uh, concentration and attention to not only backing the four cross-corner, but also controlling the cue ball. And, I, I, you know, sometimes that doesn't work out well. I think if you just concentrate on one thing and play that one thing, you see? Now, he, see, he, he, he wanted to play the safe side of it and... He ran into the eight. I think if he would have just played a solid safety, reposition the cue ball behind the seven and the ten with good speed on the four ball, I think he would have left a much tougher situation sure. for uh, for Deshane. And that's a good lesson for anybody that might be watching this video on demand on our YouTube channel later or that's even watching right now live. Uh, a two-way shot is not always your best option. Sometimes you just have to make the decision to shoot at the ball or play safe. And because it's, uh, some of these shots that you, that suggest you put, you can go for the ball and play safe, it's a real low percentage shot on the ball. So therefore, when, when that when that comes up, when, you're, when it's a low percentage shot on the ball, you're probably better off just going ahead and playing all out. It's a good safety. This is a great hit. Yeah, he got quite, kind of fortunate there to uh, hit the ten, hit the ten and put the four ball behind the seven. Sure did. Now yeah, you know this is a tough spot that Jeremy's in here. Well, he's called it down in the corner pocket. Now they are playing ball in pocket. He's gonna kick this. He's gonna <laughs> kick, and I I can see that a lot of the kicks are gonna lead down towards that corner. Wow. Oh, man. When he hit that, it's about as good as you could hit it. You know, and he certainly did get rewarded yeah. for as, as well as he hit it. And up scratching. He couldn't have hit that any better and not made it. That's the funny thing. That's, but, of course, then he gets the scratch. He doesn't want to cross this line. Okay, he's all right. This is pretty tricky here. He might be better. I don't know if I would have done that. I may, I may have him just follow it down and played three cushions toward the nine. Mm -hmm. You know, because I don't want no long shot on the nine. Well, I'm, I'm getting up towards the nine here a little bit. I'd much rather have the angle and be a foot or two further away. Right. He, now he doesn't have to hit it nearly as hard, and the pocket will accept the shot much easier. Well, this DeShane looks like he's going to take the lead, and uh, this will be the first time he's had the lead with the exception of game number one when he was leading one to nothing. Once again, the, the, the breaker lost the game. Yeah. So it looks like the last six or so games or five games, whoever broke the balls end up losing that game. And that's a, a vicious cycle. Except last game, I think Deshane had it with two in a row. Yeah. He took the lead. So I'm, my bad. And that's, I'm, I'm mistaken. Now Jeremy's uh, taking his break here. I think he's trying to re-align himself. Pretty important. You know, I don't know what Mike's doing. Is he going to just try and break a few times here? I don't know whether he's allowed to do that, uh, what the rules are with this event, but he might be trying to rack the balls and see how they even rack up if there's a gap that seems to form. Because, you know, a rack can change a hair a couple thousandths from here to there. 
You know, while we have a moment, I'd like to go back to that situation where Jerry had that bank on that four ball. He played, he played the bank on the four ball, and he tried to play cue ball as well, but but he wasn't able to do either. He didn't put the bank down. And he obviously didn't position the cue ball where he wanted to. Uh, and that's when I said that whenever you're confronted with a situation where you're sh you're shooting somewhat of a low percentage shot. There's no reason to just go ahead and play the shot in the cue ball. Just play all cue ball, you know. And I think that he, if he would have done that, he wouldn't have lost that game. He wouldn't have lost that game. And my mistake, I thought that that was Mike DeShane. That was actually our head referee, Ken Schumann, out there racking the balls. So the balls are waiting for Jeremy. And he's already back to the table for us. So and I don't believe he has to wait for Mike, who has taken his break as well. So if he decides that he's going to break, he's going to do it. He can get up and do it without waiting. He's going to come down and inspect the rack. And Mike is coming on his way back to the arena. You see him in the background there. And Jeremy's ready to kick us off here. No, he hit that break much better. I don't know if he's going to make anything. But the balls didn't seem like they opened up uh, uh, well. But uh, he did pocket a ball on the break. But he did strike the break much better because of the, how the cue ball just sifted back slowly, indicating that he struck the one ball squarely. He does have a shot on the one. Let's take a look where the two is. Two's position near the uh, near the cue ball I don't th it doesn't go in the pocket where the eight balls in front of so therefore he's going to have to roll this in the next ball will then be the four after the two which is good because it's somewhat convenient to the two. Oh, he, oh Ooh. Yeah, this. not even close you know, roughly <laughs> but uh, it fell in well he doesn't have to go too much further after he shoots the two because he'll have a natural angle to go down to the five and stay in control of the cue ball while doing so. Yeah, well, the four is next after he shoots the two, so. Right. Yeah. So he'll keep that nice angle, stop the ball probably. Right. Yeah. So Keeps now, him a nice angle to go towards the five, and that'll let him run two rails out onto the six and keep control. Yeah, I like to get as close to the six as possible because. Uh, So I like to have him keep that angle where you say go two cushions to the bottom cushion, then to the side cushion, and then toward the six. Right. So that, and in order for him to do that, he's going to have to stay above the five. Oh, he's look, he's oh. look what he's done here. He's not really playing smoothly now. He's really, un really uncomfortable for some reason. He's not comfortable out there. Yeah. That's the third ball or fourth ball he's missed in this match. And it is early. And. uh he, he can't do that against a player like DeShane, but DeShane uh, didn't take advantage of his opportunity there. Missing the four on the side, he's left Jeremy a very difficult shot on the four. This is, uh, this is a lot better than the alternative, though. Getting back to the table with a hard shot, it's a as very opposed to shot. watching the referee rack the balls. Very, very difficult shot considering the distance of the shot and the position of the five. Sure. Not only does he have to make a good shot on the four, he has to play good position on the five. And to do that, it's not going to be easy. Tough shot. Very tough shot. He had to position and, you know, obviously jarred the, the ball. And he hit the shot reasonably well. He didn't hit, miss it by much. But the angle that he had on that particular shot, he had to hit cleanly into the pocket. A little bit of a miss, miss, uh, miss hit, and you weren't going to get the you weren't going to get the shot. You weren't going to get it, and that's exactly what happened. In the meantime, he made a nice, nice shot on the combination. I like the other, uh, the other, uh, the overhead angle. I'm not trying to uh, do your job. I'm just, I just thought if it was an option. Because <laughs> it's, it's easier to see the angles that, with the overhead. Okay. You did, you did good. 
<laughs> we just beat on him, don't we? <laughs> Alvin truly is. You do, really? Uh, well, then why don't you try showing it? <laughs> <laughs> And Shane, I think, is going to manage this. This ball isn't frozen, so I think he has no worries about hitting this with a little bit of left-hand English. And if he puts the 9 and 10 down, he'll have a two-game lead in this match. You know, and... Uh, I don't think that's happened yet. It's true. A lot of seesaw. So Jeremy's struggling a little bit here, and uh, now he's, he's falling behind by two games. And like you said, this is the first time in the match that either player has been hit by two games, and now the struggling player is behind by two games. So uh, watch out. This could be, uh, you know, this could be tough. Yeah, well, all it takes is a couple of more game lead, and the guy that's trailing in an alternating break format can really take have the worst of it. Well, he definitely has the worst of it, but, uh, you know, if if you're struggling in a trailing by two games, it's very difficult to uh, surmount leads in, in an alternate for, uh, break format. You yeah. Know, and, and he's not playing well right now. Right now. Right now. But there's a lot of time left. Well, before that game, the ProPoll.com stats folks had Mike DeShane shooting at a 935 and Jeremy Jones shooting at an 850. And both missed a or two there. Well, he really must have hit those balls well because I heard a lot of noise over there and uh, cue balls in this near the center of the table. He popped his rock? Boy, yeah, and you know, uh, <laughs> he certainly got rewarded for it. Look how nicely the balls are spread. And I do believe the five ball is off the cushion, which will allow that combination to play much more simple. <laughs> He'll be able to roll that combo in. He played that shot correctly. He'll be able to fall right on line, in line for the three. Just a hair of English. and I might have come a little bit further across, but that's okay. Well, and now he's going to play the two-five combination here. Oh, that's the two. I thought that was the four. Yeah. My bad. So I would be in this position. I'm sorry. And I, I like the, uh, the other angle anyway, which cutting the two to my right. That way it's easier to control the cue ball. Exactly. See, he, he would have had the luxury of hitting that shot with a little more speed had the cue ball been further to the left, cutting the two, because he wouldn't have lost control of either the two or the cue ball. But now he had to be concerned with the angle that he left himself on the combination. Yeah, he had to be concerned of, of uh, losing the c control of the cue ball. But he's certainly worked his way through this nicely. His only worry right now is uh, keeping an angle on the four this so he can get over to the six. A little No, that's bit fine. Funny. That's fine. He's, yeah, he can just hit it soft, float. He can draw to the rail and back out. He can do a lot of things here. <laughs> Where's the cue ball going? Look at here. Oh, I thought that was going toward the side. Hmm. Well, it looks like it's going to be a three-game deficit here. And our ProPool.com stats have Mike DeShane shooting at 900, and Jeremy Jones has fallen all the way down to 787. Yeah, he's... Uh He's not playing well right now. He is definitely struggling. And he's making us eat our words about the guy that was waiting and the guy that was coming in. Well, sometimes it goes that way. You know? I 
I can guarantee you that he's not doing it on purpose. <laughs> Maybe I'll uh, get the gun out for a couple of these breaks. Shane six, Jones three. Not going to get anything, but the cue ball's parked behind the nine. That uh, actually saved him there at the 20, 22.91. That's that's a fairly fairly hard break, isn't it? Yeah, that's Three a solid break. Yeah. Seems to be a discussion concerning the removal of the magic rack. One ball is hanging in the corner pocket. I don't see any way that he can make it from where the, his, the cue ball is. So he's going to play for a, for a jump shot here, it looks like to me. Mm -hmm. And what he tried to do, he also tried to tie up the three ball because it's always good to tie up a ball if you're the one pushing. Right. You know, because a pusher is always at a disadvantage because he gives away the option. Right. So therefore, when you give away the option, well, you want to make that rack as difficult as possible for your opponent to be able to take the shot. Right. You're just trying to get back to the table. That's your that's your chore. Jeremy uh, is opting to take the shot. I don't know. This is a pretty risky shot, isn't it? I'm not real good with calling the shot. It's not that risky. It's just that you know. It's a jump shot. You're going into the air. You can lose control. But yeah, you could jump the table or something. You know, I'm not real good with the predicting what's going to happen with them jump shots. Right. You know, because I don't really jump. I don't like. I don't like the jump cue. I think it's great for the game. Don't get me wrong. Very exciting. You know, I'm old school. I play a lot of one pocket and. You can't use a jump cue against me playing one pocket. That's not going to do that, That's never going to work. It's never going to happen. No, Somebody can't gonna, jump the rack. No and, way. No way. <laughs> no, that's not going to work. So therefore, since I don't play uh, rotation games because I can't pocket balls, uh, I don't have to be concerned about the jump cue or, or developing a skill to use it. Right, right. Not, not, not that you people out there shouldn't. I, mean, every, I think that everyone's listening to this telecast should develop a skill to use the jump cue because it can get you out of trouble. Right. You know, whereas a kick cup shot might not be able to do that. Mike played a great kick safety there. And Jeremy kicked this ball in. Ooh. Well, well he, he called that ball. Now he has to either get out of the jump cue again or I don't know. Well, at that angle, the three might not come or stay in the pocket if he shoots it into the side. So he, he has to. Yeah, look but what what are what are the options? Oh, he is getting the jump cue. Yeah, but what are the options? I mean, yeah. he ran over, he's grabbed his jump cue because of the shot clock. Sometimes you're forced to take a low percentage shot because you have nothing else. Right. And sometimes nice you make shot. It. <laughs> 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 so therefore, you know. Why not? I mean, it's your, uh, that's the only option we have to survive. Exactly. You know, and, uh, so why not take it? Well, I like the fact that he did run over and grab it. He did have to assess that that was his only option. You know, that could pump him up a little bit. You know, he's been struggling, like we said. He's been struggling. And shots like that may uh, pump you up a little bit to where, uh, you know, you get that adrenaline going, you get that confidence back, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're back in the match. It's been a long weekend, and, and you noted that he was probably, he, he might have 10 years on Mike. Maybe he needs a little bit of an adrenaline jolt to get him back awake. It's been a long weekend. It's a Sunday night. I don't know. Maybe. 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 We might see a new Jeremy who just woke up. It only takes something like that to kind of you know, get Sometimes your you're right because he's quite capable of... Uh, of playing great pool because if he wasn't he wouldn't be in this position but he hasn't shown it in this match but I'm certainly sure he has it in him right. <laughs> and he, maybe it'll bring it out boom let's look and look 
All right. Well, keep in mind, he was the winner of the winner side. He has yet to be defeated in this event. So he earned his stripes. Okay, now he's falling. I think he's falling a little short here. He would have liked to have gotten straight on the eight, but uh, where he would stop for the nine. Now he has to play the nine in the side, I think. I don't know what kind of an angle he actually has here. He can go anywhere. He can go in the side with a little draw to the end rail or side rail. Yeah, he can just follow it forward, too. Yeah, this is no gimme here. You got to make sure you make the ball here. And, and controlling the cue ball, it's a little bit touchy here. See, now he had to go past it. Two cushions. Yes. But he was shot. able to work himself through that rack and uh, get on the board again. And the home crowd, what hometown crowd likes the fact that Jeremy isn't going down without a fight. Well, that's good, you know, because he's shown resiliency. He's, he's coming back, you know, even at an older age. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it's, it all started with uh, that jump shot. That shot that right. he was improbable to make. Six to four sounds a lot better than uh, seven three. Seven to three. <laughs> when you're racing to twelve, yeah. So that's a, definitely a confidence builder there. Let's see if he has an opportunity at this rack if he takes advantage of it. But of course, Mike DeShane to the table breaking the balls, and with his break, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're fortunate to get an opportunity. Well, that recent offensive spurt has given Jeremy Jones an 8.25. And Mike DeShane is shooting a 9.20 on the ProPool.com stats. DeShane 6, Jones 4. you got to like the way DeShane breaks the balls. It really puts it, a lot of power into his break. And he struck the break pretty good there. He went down into some traffic. He wasn't going to really travel that far, but he got he got kicked. Well, he got, you know, he hit the break solidly because the cue ball came straight back. Uh, you know, there were some running balls that kissed the cue ball. That's why it took off so quickly. But he hit the break solidly, you know, and he hit pocket, I don't know, a couple balls on the break. Two balls, matter of fact. And he's got himself a nice good shot to play solid safety here. I don't know if he's done well with it. If he, if he allowed Jeremy to see the ball here, he could put him back under the eight. Right. And I think that's what you're going to see here. Jeremy's just already stroking at the ball. And there it is. That's right. See, what's important for Deshane not to let him see that ball because that could have happened. And uh, I don't think he could afford that to happen. Yeah, you know, with, with the, the battle, the he's, the trying, balls, right? he's trying to convince Jeremy that he, he earned his way here and that Jeremy's just not in his class. I don't know. I, <laughs> you know, that's what he wants to convince him, and he can't do that if he keeps letting him see those type of balls. Jeremy will tie this game up very quickly if he keeps letting him see little edges of the ball. Watch the foul here. He's going to be he's real close to the, to the rail. Wow, you know, he called it there. Wow. Well, for those of you just tuning in, you're watching the finals of the men's Ultimate Ten Ball Challenge. We're here at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Frisco, Texas. I'm J.R. Calvert. Joining me in the booth is Billy and Cardone. You know, Jeremy's got a decision to make right here. He's pretty flat on the one, considering the position of the four. He's going to have to go to the other side of the table for, for position on the four. And he's pretty flat on the one. Maybe you're better off just playing a hook here behind the nine, you know, and trying to get ball in hand that way, because the four is a big ball in this rack, as you can see. Mm -hmm. and, and he's pretty flat on the one. He's going to have to hit this with a lot of speed. And when you do that, you really, you know, the pocket shrinks up on you. 
So therefore, you know, he has a decision. I, I think he's better off just playing a good a hook here behind the nine. I'm going to stick him on the nine. Yeah, and that's right. One down by the eight I ball. think so. Seven ball. No, oh, he wants to be able to get a shot on the one here. He, <laughs> yeah. he tied up the one and seven, something he didn't really want to do because he figures he could ball in hand here without a pocket on the one now. Well, he might be able to lock him on the seven then and yeah. start a three foul. Yeah, but I doubt if he's going to get him on three fouls. I just well, doubt it. Look at this kick that he's going to do here. Well, he's going to try to go uh, very three different. Rounds? Yeah, he's going to try to go. He's going to draw the ball and go three cushions. One, two, three. Oh, just barely missing it. Barely missing it. Amazing try that was. Well, I, I think he's going to be stuck on the seven here. And the Q, or the one, is going to be all the way downtown under this eight and nine. And he's going to try and leave it right around the eight and nine so that he blocks even a few more kick paths. I think he's going to try to freeze him on the seven, take it away that side rail. Oh, sure, sure. Now, took away that side rail, you see? Mm -hmm. now, he, now he really can't hit this using that side rail. Sure. Well, he did both of what we were saying. But, yes, uh, how he moves on that seven and freezes is big. Yeah, it was very important for him to get as close to the seven as possible. The closer you get to a ball, the more rails you cut off. Sure. Or the more areas on that rail you cut off. Right now, I'm trying to see if there's a way more than two rails running and two rails reversing just to get to the one. <laughs> That's how good of a safety that was. He's going to have relatively the same type of a kick shot. One, two, three cushions, hitting the one and toward the ten. I think that's his best shot to hit this. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were he, what I would try to do, I would, I would, I would tie up the five there or, or, or put a ball in front of the, that's what he, that's a good shot because now what he's done, he's given Jeremy ball in hand, mm -hmm. but a very, very difficult ch uh, chance to play position for the four because now he's tied up that pocket where it's natural for, for uh, play position for the four for Jeremy if the eight wasn't there, but now he's got to do something differently. Now he may be encouraged to try to get him on three here. He's going to play position for the four in this pocket, and if he gets a little offline, he can hook him behind the six. It'll be on two fouls. So he's got a couple things going for him here. Now, if he doesn't like the angle that he's left himself with, he can just stop it and hook him behind the six here. But, you know, he looked like he's in a pretty good line to go for the run out. So what do you do if you're a pro? You run out. But if you're not a pro, you're underneath a pro, you go for the three fouls. But when you're talking about upper echelon players, these caliber players, I think you got to go for the run out. You know, there's that old adage, if you can take the cue out of your opponent's hands, do so. Right. And uh, particularly when you're talking about top, top players. Because top, top players have that ability to do things that other players can't do. So you feel you have, you have them on three fouls, all of a sudden they kick it in. Or they do some miraculous thing and uh, you find yourself looking at what you did wrong. And it's somebody that don't feel good. Right. But if you take care of business and you show a little heart and go for the run out, boom, that's a confidence builder. And it, you know, it pays off in dividends. Sure. sure. Wholeheartedly agree with that statement. And uh, for a player that was struggling, for a player that was struggling a few, a few rounds ago, if you were going to take in his pulse, you would have seen now he's much more calm. He doesn't have as many beats. I mean, he's really starting to uh, take control of himself and, and, the, and the balls on the table. What a difference a couple good shots make, huh? Really? Yeah. Even with the, with the pros, the top pros, you know, they might be the most solid mentally, but a couple of good shots gets them right back in line every time. Nice. He struck ball. Beautiful speed. You know, he really likes the way he's playing now. You have to, you have to agree with that. Yeah. And when you lay the cue ball down as nicely as he did there, boom. All he's got to do is stop the ball. <laughs> he's right there. <laughs> right. Uh, how, how do you like me now? <laughs> What's that saying? You're never as good as your best shot or as bad as your worst shot? <laughs> oh, yeah.
And it's gonna make it 6-5 now. He's definitely back in the match now. You have to fall behind by three games. He's narrowed the gap to one, breaking the balls and playing well. So therefore, he certainly has uh, has gotten it back together. Well, judging from the way he's looking here, he's going to be breaking, and he thinks he's going to break and run these balls out. Now let's let's put this theory to the test. He's feeling better. I think he's making better decisions. He's probably going to break these balls really well. Probably is, you know. I think he's going to control it. Our ProPool.com stats coming in. And right now, Mike DeShane is shooting an 857, while Jeremy Jones has pulled up to an 846. So the players are fairly close. And the score is fairly close. Fairly close. You can't get any uh, closer than a 6 to 5 score after 11 games. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> nice break. Wow. Nice break. Nice Look break. At that. And he got pretty unlucky not to come up with a shot on the one here. And uh, I don't know uh, I don't know how nicely that nine is positioned. Or a nice bank combination bank one nine looks like he's got a pretty big pocket there he might be in, induced to play in this okay right i mean who would think that you're going to play a combination bank but uh -huh. considering how nicely the balls are positioned the nine in relation to the six and the pocket it's sort of an inducement to play this shot which he's done he's going to play this shot let's see how well he hits it big There's shot a here of, a lot of ways for him to come out good on this he's got to control the cue ball though. you don't want to get behind the seven here at that he hit it cleanly and got the one to go two rails up table well off the first rail referee Ken yep. Schumann is coming in to clean an area on the table now this is a big shot here because if he's able to cut the one on the side he carries that carries natural three rail position for the two and he's, he's going to not only get a position for the two he's going to end up with a nice angle to not only pocket the two but go across the table for the three right he doesn't want to get too far. He doesn't want to get too flat. That's pretty good right there. He wants to stay right there. He doesn't want to have to draw this ball eight feet just to be in a position to have the right angle. Now, do you think he's going to follow this ball with high left? No, well, he, I would he's going definitely to, come back. He, he, he looks like he has enough angle that he can definitely come, come back. Right off the definitely side. come back here because you make the ball 100% of the time. There you go. And now he, had, now he has a decision to make because playing position with the four on the side may be a little bit of a problem here because you really have to get good position on the, on, on the four on the side, drop nicely for the five. So therefore, you know, this is, a, this is a decision for him right here. He may want to draw back for the, for the corner. You know, he's got to get good on this because this is touchy here. If he falls too short, you know, and he has to cut it to his right, he may have a problem. You, know, you don't want this shot to stop his momentum. You know, sometimes you can get that awkward angle where you can't follow it because you're fear of falling into the side. So you see, he ended up on the wrong side of the four, and that was a shot you really had to be careful with when playing position for that four on the side. That's why it was a tough pocket to play shape for. Sure was. And it looked so enticing because it was right there, you know. But it, it being right there, maybe not good enough because you have to get that precise angle, and sometimes that's hard to attain. Let's see if he puts this bank down. You don't want this to stop his momentum. Nicely done. Nicely done. I'm certainly sure he's glad that's over. Mm -hmm. you know, he's got to make sure that he uh, stays focused here because this is not a gimme either. You know, that seven balls in the middle of the table there. He has get <coughs> to probably play uh, for the same pocket on the seven that he's shooting the six in. Watch out. See, now see how the cue ball got away from him there? That wasn't really a real easy shot. 
because a slight miss hit on that six ball sends that cue ball a little further down the table. And this is a kind of uh, the, the same shot that he missed in game number one. Uh, and that was the eight ball. He overcut it. Now this is the same type of a shot, only he's shooting it into the other pocket. Let's see how well he does here. Okay, he's, he's much more comfortable now. Mm -hmm. Looks like this match is going to get tied up seven games apiece here. Six games apiece. Six games apiece? Yeah. Oh, yeah, six games apiece. Next game. <laughs> <laughs> I got you there, man. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, let me think who is it. <laughs> well, I believe it's the person who won the leg since it's an odd game, so it That's would good. be. No, you're figuring it out. Like That's shake. good. <laughs> you figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It only took me about 20 minutes, but, you know, <laughs> I had my slide rule out, my protractor, yeah. and, you know, next thing I know. You didn't even need the assistance of the scorekeeper or whatever. You did it yourself. <laughs> well, speaking of scorekeepers, our <laughs> ProPool.com stats folks got Jeremy Jones shooting an 867. Mm. And Mike DeShane coming six, in at 859. Can't get any closer than that. You cannot. I mean, you can't get this score any closer at six games apiece either. <laughs> and Mike is uh, uh, taking a look and he's saying, Mr. Referee, please straighten out that rack. You would think with the template that you would get the same rack every time in terms of not only the, the, the tightness of the rack, but also the alignment of it. You would think you would get the same uh, rack every time, but, but you don't. And I think that what they would need to do is they would need to draw on the, on the cloth on the table little markings to where you put that template down in the same position every time. You think you can probably trace the, the template? What's that? Why? Evidently, he does. <laughs> Well, let's see how Mike hits them this time. I think he's going to pay particular attention. To that. that one got away from him. Yes, but it, it sure didn't, did. Didn't keep him from making a ball. Yeah, he was very fortunate that Cubo was going directly toward that pocket and it got a kiss off the one at the very last second there, or else he would have ended up scratching on the break. And he really mishit the hit mishit the break because the cue ball went to the side quickly. Yeah, but he was able to pocket a ball, like you said, on the break. He was quite fortunate not to scratch. He's ended up with a shot on the one. Two ball position next to the four near the foot spot. Tough ball to play position for from, from here, I believe. So he's opted to play a safety. Very smart shot. I think I might have to call the 10. If I'm I, think kick you're, this. I, I think you're right. So you notice the position of the 1 and the 10, which they are obviously did. And it's, it looks like the 1 is laying right next to the 10, where if he hits the top of the 1, there's a good chance of pocketing that 10 in the corner pocket. Sure. It is wired, as they say. I don't know about being wired. <laughs> <laughs> but it certainly has, uh, has a good chance. Now, he's going to go two cushions. He's not even playing it that way. He's, and I think this is a smart shot because he's more, more probable of hitting the one this way. Sure. And look at the results there, okay? Much better choice right there than to go after that 110, really inducing 110 possible billiard right. because you don't have the control that you have with the shot that he selected. Very, very smart shot by a veteran player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. So I guess what you're saying is I got suckered into the 10 being there, like an amateur. 
No, I didn't say that. <laughs> you did. That's what you were thinking. But of no. course, if you were at the table, you may have switched your mind too and uh, opted to go the other way. Yeah. Right? Very possibly. <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't get up and just shoot to death all the time. I can guarantee it. One more corner. Playing the one ball, he's jumping over the ten. Playing the one, difficult shot here. He might even scratch it the side here off the, off the wall. Well, look at the one. He's going to get behind the three here. I think he has a piece of it. Uh, maybe enough for so. a crossover, and maybe then a two ten if he takes the cue ball all the way downtown. You know. Yeah, but this is. He's got, to, he's got to put a little inside on this bank here. If, if in fact he can't make it straight in, that is, if he if he only has the bank angle on, on the uh, on the shot, then he's going to have to put a little inside English to avoid the kiss. Now he can make the one. Nicely struck ball, nice control of the cue ball. Now in terms of not only direction but speed, the four ball position next to the. Uh, Next to the 10, to 3, to next to the 4. That's convenient. The 5, 6 at the same end of the table. That's nicely, they're nicely positioned. This is a nice rack for Jeremy here. He must get out here because it certainly has a great opportunity. as he wanted to. Now he's going to have to do something a little bit differently with the cue ball. I don't know what he can do considering the position of the five and that nine over there as well. I don't know uh, from the angle that he's left himself with and from our vantage point what he can do. I I don't know if he can kill it. Uh, I don't know if he can put inside English on it and go short or underneath him with the cue ball. I'd probably go inside in English and just hold it below the side pocket. Like this here? Exactly. Okay, that's what he could do, and that's he's done it well. And now let's go back to where we were talking about the rested player. Okay, even though he was struggling, he was rested enough to recuperate, to get that, you know, to get that strength back because it was in reserve. He could, he could call on it, and, you know, he's playing great right now. He's playing great ball. And, you know, uh, I'm sure you're you're aware of the fact that some players, they just want to, uh, oh, okay, that ball just looked a little funny to me for a second. But what they like to do is they like to visualize the whole match, see how them, maybe how they overcome problems. There are a variety of different things, and it helps them more or less program their brain on how they're going to react to things. And no doubt that Jeremy has been in this position before where he's played poorly and had to come back and win a tournament or a match. Experience. Experience and uh, the advantage of uh, being being uh, fresh. Because, you know, it's a lot... It's a lot easier for a fresh player to to work work his way through a, a match if he's struggling than it is for a, a, a more of a tired player. Right. Because now you know it's hard to get that energy and to get that adrenaline flowing when you're tired. Sure. Because you know, you're not thinking well, you're not executing well, and it's harder to get it back together if you're if, if you're if you're tired. And, uh, in this case, Jeremy is the uh, fresher of the two players, obviously, because he was the one that was resting. And uh, he was able to come back. And he's come back nicely, too. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. At one time in the match, he was down six games to three, and he's won four consecutive games. And believe it or not, this is almost a carbon copy of how the women's finals went. Kelly Fisher jumped out to it. I believe 7-4 seven, four. Seven, four lead yeah. and may never have won another game after that. Allison may have come back and beat her 10-7. to seven. Yeah, I wasn't really here for the beginning of that match, but I did come in where Allison was was trailing, I think, it was about around 7-5. to five, And I watched her play from that position, and boy, she really played. I tell you, she, she really played well. She was on fire. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anybody that wants to watch that match? Again, or maybe missed it, 
be able to see that at our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash inside pool mag. Watch all these videos on demand. Boy, that really got away from him. He hit below the side pocket. Oh, I didn't notice that. Did he pocket a ball on the break? This tank to count him. Three, seven. No, he no, didn't he did pocket not. a ball on the break. And uh, that usually happens when you don't hit the one solidly. You don't really get rewarded on the break with the terms of ac action. And uh, that time he didn't hit the one solidly, and he did pocket a ball. And he left the shade one nine straight in. And, uh, Serious problems. Well, uh, our ProPool.com folks, all the statisticians are telling us that Jeremy Jones is now shooting an 880 with Mike DeShane shooting an 862. This is a very big shot right here for the one to the two. A lot of traffic in the center of the table, and that's where he's going to need to travel, I guess, around that center of the table to get down the table for the two. Let's see how he, if he, how he avoids this. Uh, all these interfering balls here. Very difficult shot from for position from the one to the two. Wow! What is, oh my goodness! Oh my oh, lord! Oh, oh, look at this! Look at that! No, no, oh, no I, I, don't, I do not believe that shot. <laughs> I do not believe that shot. I mean, Jeremy's looking up in the air like, what did it happen? Why did this happen to happen to me? I just don't believe what he did there. Uh, there's Jeremy in the background. Well, anyways, uh, no need to concern yourself, uh, Jeremy. You know, no need to concern yourself. It happened, and uh, it wasn't his fault. <laughs> no part in it. My goodness, I don't know what he had in mind, but whatever it was, <laughs> it certainly worked out. get a good angle on the six and drop for the seven because if you notice the seven doesn't pass in the lower right hand corner no and, it doesn't and, and that's not the greatest place to be right he's gonna he's gonna go forward here with inside english now he's gonna go two cushions yeah i think he's hit the speed fairly well uh he could he could have stood to be a little bit you know straighter in here he'd like to be on the other side of the table or near straight in yeah, but, if he would have, but if he would have uh thought that he would have ended up here late in the rack considering how he, how he started the rack he would have definitely taken it <laughs> that first shot was just a, that was a, a I don't know shot, I mean that, that, how do you get from the one to the two I didn't mm -hmm. know that was available <laughs> four zigzags of course <laughs> I mean that was a, that was a circus shot I don't know what <laughs> that was but uh, wow was that the great to watch Surely amazing. It's been a while since I've laughed that hard when I saw a full shot. <laughs> but uh, he's if, come back and tied it up. <laughs> if we only were to believe that he played that, that would have been even greater. <laughs> you, you know? He has a oh, he played time. that. Oh, then let's take another look at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he would have had to point that out. And playback, he has to point every point on the rail that he's going to uh, Draw that out with the telestrator. Here's what he needs to do. Zit, 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 zit. <laughs> and then them follow the lines. <laughs> oh, well, anyways, uh, tied up gap here, game 14, seven games apiece. <laughs> Pretty great stuff here. Yeah, tell me about it now. <laughs> this is Mike DeShane's break, and he's looking to get forward here. Now, he should have taken a surge, and that's what it tells us. Uh, how close is this? We have a 7-7 tie, and Jones is shooting a 80. Shane is shooting 882. <laughs> I'd say the, the stats are quite indicative to the score, you know. I mean, could have been an 881, maybe. Or an 80. Yeah, slight miscalculation <laughs> somewhere. 
I don't think we'll ask Ron Hoffman to retabulate or make a new formula. I think his formula works just fine. I think the Shane is going to take a second, take a look at the rack, come around, and I think he's going to mangle referee Ken Schumann's offering here. I think he's going to make something. No. He came up dry. Yes, he did. Now, this first shot is an interesting one because it isn't, uh, you know, made a lot of, uh, a lot of problems out there from the one to the two. This is, uh, I think this is actually has more problems than what the circus shot that we saw last no, round. No, no way. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Okay, maybe not. I stand corrected. He's going to probably have to elevate and dig down that cue ball to get around that nine. All right. Oh, he can't, he's not going to shooting. But he's going to have to draw around that nine. You don't like inside here? Oh, he did go inside. Yeah, but he overcut the ball. He overcut it just to miss that nine. And yeah, that. that's right. He compensated. They're overcompensated. You know, there was a couple of ways you could miss the nine. One was to it put a lot of English on it. The other way was to play the outside of the pocket by overcutting it. But the problem with that is you could overcut it, which he did. You know. Nice position on the two, playing position in between the five and the seven. certainly took his eye off that ball. Here, uh, he was guilty of playing position and not making playing position and not, and not making the ball. You know, you really can't take the ball for granted. You know, right. you know that, that's what happens. That's a common error that uh, you know a lot of players make. You know, when they miss a ball, that was as simple as that shot. Right. They just take the ball for granted. Yeah, they're playing position in their mind, and they think the ball's a gimme. Well, what they're doing is, is they're thinking that the shot is automatic and they're, and they're only playing position. And the shot isn't automatic. No matter how simple a shot is, it's not automatic. You know? Well, I think we're all guilty of that. It, but, it, you know, do it a couple of times in an important situation and you'll realize how easy it is to do. But, you know, when I, when I was playing my best pool when I was young, like I think I was around 26, 27 years old, I, I just had that mindset that I wasn't going to miss any simple shots. You know, I just wasn't going to miss any simple shots, you know. And that's the way I felt. I said, uh, and, and, I, and I was very conscious of that, you know. And when, you, when you're not conscious of that and you get careless, that's when I think you need a little more experience. Because Buddy Hall will never miss an easy shot like that. Okay. Buddy Hall never, never would miss an easy shot like that. Never. never. Nick Varner would never miss a shot like that. No. I can think of a lot of players that I would say would be guilty of missing ball in hand. Neither <laughs> of those two that we've just mentioned would. I should say a young Buddy Hall or a young Nick Varner. I admit, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> we're, we're talking about a young Mud Deshaies. I think that he needs to uh, be a little more concerned about making all the balls you're supposed to make because that's what you really have to do to succeed on a pro tour and be a, a top, a high finisher. Right. You have to make all the balls you're supposed to make. And if you can get yourself to do that, then you got a real good chance. Agreed. Well, 
What happened there? It looked like he, he wasn't happy about something. Not sure. I think he's got a natural angle here just to roll on down table here. Mentioned something to Ken Schumann. I don't know what it was, but uh, he was concerned about something. But <laughs> Jerry Jones has regained the lead. I think that's the third or fourth lead change that we've seen. Yeah, there were there was well, Jerry went out one. Uh, was, well, my, I should say Mike the same went one nothing, and then Jeremy regained the lead of two to one. Then it was two two. And Jeremy had to lead a three two. It was three three. I think Jeremy had to lead a four three. And then Mike DJ went to the lead at 5 4. And it was 6 4. You got this already, Ken? No, it was 6 3. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, it was 6 3. Well, uh, our ProPool.com stats we've got Jones shooting an 892, and DeShane shooting an 859. Yeah, that's about right. Anybody wants to make this party a little bit more merrier, you can always hit the little F and T icons at the bottom of your Ustream player. Invite some of your friends from Twitter and Facebook. It'll open up in a separate window, and they actually do most of the work for you here at Ustream, and they can send a link for you. So just a couple of clicks of a button, and we won't even stop the video. Is there any way to tell you how many people are listening to this or watching this or there are ways yeah we can you know yeah but, uh, oh really you're getting up there are they enjoying this uh, final match so. you I think believe so? so how do you how do you know that say in the chat. and what do they normally say no, they, oh, they well. love to say how nice the stream is and they get out there and yeah uh, thank us, and uh, we appreciate all the positive feedback and the negative feedback too. If our sound isn't working right, <laughs> which we really don't mess up too often, but they're glad to tell us when something's malfunctioning. They're liking it. We're getting a lot of thumbs up here. Yeah, they like they like the stream. Yeah, clear. They do. Are they, are they learning anything out there? I think they are, yes. How do you know that? Because I'm learning something, so they're learning something, too. Oh, well, that's good. He allowed the cue ball to get away from him slightly there, and uh, that's what he didn't want to see, because the strength of that shot was to position the cue ball behind the 10 just about assuring himself of another opportunity back at the table with a pretty good shot. But since he's allowed uh, Jeremy to see the one, now Jeremy has control here. Let's see what he does. Now Jeremy figures to bank the one up table underneath him now or up there and reposition the cue ball possibly behind the nine. Let me see if he can do that. No, he didn't do it. He 
he did something different. I don't know what he tried there. I don't know, but I, I know that he's not happy with it. Look at the, the I, don't, emotions I, there. I don't know what he <laughs> had in mind. I mean, sometimes you watch a shot, and after it's over, you see the results of the shot, and you still don't know what the guy had in mind. And that, that's, you know, that's not often. You watch a player like Jeremy Jones. After he gets done shooting, you just about 100% of the time know what he had in mind. I don't know what he had in mind. And this cue ball here is, I don't know about this shot. Well, Jeremy definitely needed a return mistake, and that's what he got. Yeah, he was quite fortunate that the chain uh, mishit that ball as badly as he did. Now he has to kick it to two. You know, he's got an excellent chance of doing something good here, though. And I don't believe he's got Jeremy hooked behind the four here. I don't believe he can see the edge of the two, considering the uh, position of the four. It's going to have to go two cushions underneath the two. I kind of like Jerry's chance. I kind of like Jeremy's chances here. I think he's a favorite to uh, walk away from the table in pretty good shape here. But the cue ball should end up behind a four somewhere. He went. He went too deeply behind the two. But that's great. That's even better. Now he used all those interfering balls in the center of the table for protection. Exactly. Exactly what? Use all I those balls in the, over there. In all those balls <laughs> in the center of the table. He's got the he's got the gauntlet laid down. Mm -hmm. Oh, now he's uh, he's worked his way. Uh, a shot here, but uh, you know, dropping on the three is not automatic. Uh, it's it, pretty hard to tell whether he has enough room there on the two, so it doesn't look like he's now. This is a pretty tough shot. He's got a slight angle on the two, which is going to send him to the right, but he's going to have to come back to the left again because it's positioned. Of the three, he can play field goal position between the seven and the nine. Take a long shot. I don't know if he's going to do that. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard for him to do that because it's such a risky thing to do. So he's going to stop there, field goal position. You know, he had enough uh, of a straight in angle to stop the ball, and by stopping the ball, he has position. Sometimes it's hard to do that because you're going to end up with a tough shot on the three, but a tough shot is better than no shot. Right. <laughs> so that's the uh, that's the, the mindset then, and the thinking process. You go through it's a tough shot, better than possibly a hook. Oh, absolutely. Now you have to make the ball. Well, yeah. He fouled the ball. He, he moved he the ten ball. Moved the ten ball, and you know again. Couple mistakes, and he's he's looking up in the air like, how did I just do that? Nicely struck there. You know, th this isn't really that simple. This run out. Because of the position of the nine, you know, it's blocking off of a, a nice part of the table where he would like to be uh, for position of the seven. Well, he's supposed to bring it back there. Now he made a great shot there. He got, you know, pretty straight. See, he but he's keep control of this ball. He may end up shooting this seven down in the or well in the corner pocket where he is himself right now. Yeah, he's going to do that, but you know, to get back to well, he's going to do the other thing. Yes. See, what I was saying is. By playing position for that pocket, then you're going to go away from the eight. Then you've got to go back again. So therefore, you know, that's why, that's why I said this isn't that simple, this, this out. But he was able to get it back from the side, the seven, which was a much better shot. Because now playing position from the seven to the eight is much simpler shooting it in the side than it would be if you would have shot it in the corner. Where, as, I, as I mentioned, by shooting, playing position for the seven in the corner, he's going away from the eight. Referee. Okay. 
<laughs> you didn't ask about them. Well, I guess he wants us to be quiet. Does that mean that we have to be quiet for the remainder of the match or just when he's at the table? Oh, no. <laughs> I think it's just for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Fairly far away from the table. Are we sharking him? I don't think we are. Do you think it's my voice, how it carries? Maybe. Yeah, you're. You, maybe you, I should you might be uh, talking a little higher pitch, pitch like this. No. <laughs> yes, cut right through the air, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about this? <laughs> How about when DeShane's at the table, you do all the commentary? And then when Jeremy's at the table, I'll do most of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a little picture or something? seven breaks. I might remember one or two that he hit solid and had an ability to run out. And I don't know whether it's the table that, that's doing it or both players are just breaking by. Okay. Propool.com stats. Coming in here and again Lost his break a little bit there. Okay, what's, what's the word here? Am I, are we allowed to talk now? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to talk in a little while. What, what's the deal here, Ken? Well, I don't know what to say, you know. Anyway, the ProPool.com stats, we've got Jeremy Jones coming in at 859 and Mike DeShane at 872. this shot. He's just called it, made it aware to referee Ken Chu. What, what, what's happening here? He's playing the one ball. He's playing the one or the eight. He said he played, he's calling the one ball. <laughs> Look more like a safety. And he, since the two's down in the corner, if the one did go, he'd keep shooting. Played the one ball. I thought the eight had blocked the pocket. Well, I guess. Extension. He's had 30 seconds. I think so. Is that what he said? Okay. I guess this is a real problematic situation that he's confronted with here, because he feels he's going to need more than 30 seconds. Or possibly. Uh, what is he doing here? He's going to try to tie something up. What's he doing? It does look like it because he wasn't going anywhere near what I would say would be the right kick spot. 
Well, I, I'm pretty convinced that he can shoot to five off the nine and open that all up. So at this point here, the six and the eight seem to be one set of problems, and the three and the seven seem to be the other set. But I think the three seven can be overcome. Let me try to nudge out a little bit. I guess he's going to play the three in the side. Cause that's, that seems to be uh, why he played position for the two the way he did. Mm -hmm. I agree. Come off the rail, put the four down in the corner. And I think what he's going to try and do is make the five carom and draw back behind the six and see if he can get to either re relocate the six and or just get behind it and shoot it in another pocket. The six doesn't pass the eight? It does not look like it has a big pocket. Side of the Buckle corner. your shoe, get it right in the side. Nice shot. Yeah. So that was nicely done. Hmm. You know what? You don't get straight on the eight here. He can get straight on the eight here. He might have a problem. Well, he's not exactly uh, bursting with angle here. He's going to probably follow this ball. Oh, he's bearded off the rail. Good stroke. Oh, he's going to take the lead, it looks like, at uh, nine games to eight. This has been a pretty interesting match, not only in terms of the score, but, uh, you know, how he fought back. And he called for his extension. Commanding nine to eight lead, I might add. What's the difference between a commanding nine to eight lead and whatever you call it, the difference? <laughs> what's, what's the difference? What, what is a commanding nine to eight lead? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what does that mean? Commanding nine to eight he, lead. He took that game. Jeremy didn't give it to him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, these guys have actually been seesawing back and forth. It's a, it's an interesting final. It is, it is. It's very interesting. If only we would be allowed to talk. <laughs> <laughs> we would make it more interesting. <laughs> I think what we need to do is get bigger monitors and go in another room. Well, you got to have that, like Hackers does have, you got to have that. Plexiglass. Whatever. Yeah, a little booth. Most times we don't run into positions like that. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. We'll have a... Since we'll probably have more equipment like that in the future. Uh, just using the monitor as opposed to the table, after the table. Why don't we just get a canvas and throw it on top of this and just... <laughs> <laughs> He uh, missed that break badly. Very badly. poorly. That, no, 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 that's, uh, he can't, he, that's something he really couldn't afford to do at this juncture of the match. Okay, he's already behind nine to eight. And it's getting late in the match. So therefore, excuses, uh, excuse me, excuse me, uh, mistakes are magnified because the opportunities are going to be few from this point on. And, you know, let's, let's face it. 
You make a mistake like that on the break, it can mean two games. Mike only needs three. That's, so, what I was, that's my point. Jeremy Post can late be... in the match, mistakes are magnified well, because of the opportunities you figure to get from this position on out. Hmm. Mike can be on the hill before Jeremy gets the shoot again. And it could be shooting the same shot he just scratched on. Propool.com stats coming in with DeShane shooting 886 and Jeremy Jones shooting 842. Was quick to get out of line. Jeremy really got to bear down here because you know well, he hasn't been breaking the balls well, and that's an indication to me that he's really not focused. You know he's not concentrating because you're really supposed to hit the break solidly and accurately, particularly at this stage of the match. You really have to break the balls good. I mean that's a requirement. As yeah. badly as he struck the break the last time he broke the balls, it indicated to me that <laughs> there's something wrong there. He's yeah. got to get it back together. Yeah. His timing's off. And he's hit this nine, and that's, that's just... Yeah, I mean, he ran solidly into that nine ball. I mean, it, you know, he's, he, there's something wrong right now with Jeremy's game. He knows he's got to get it together. He's got, he's got, he's he, this is the time. He This is crunch time. Now, a pro... An experienced pro like Jeremy knows what he has to do to get his game together. He needs to let his stroke out. He needs to shoot, whether it's, you know, calm himself mentally, whatever it is. He knows it. Let's see if he can pull it together, though. He's trying to catch Jeremy making in a point of weakness. <laughs> well, he he may be a little bit too careful. <laughs> this 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 you know this could be a pretty big momentum switch right here if Jeremy can make the five ball here. And you know he's not going to be able to hit it straight on the face, but he'll be able to run this this cue ball and probably get a shot on the six on the other side at the velocity that he's probably going to hit this ball. Well. I like his chances here. Run down into the corner, around the eight. See if it spins. Oh. Look at that. And, you see, and, that, and that's exactly what I was talking about. You know, DeShane had a good bank on that, on the five ball there. He opted to play it safe. Mm. Sometimes you can play overly careful. And yeah. when you do that against a top player, you know, it can backfire on you. Sure, okay. Okay. Now, Jeremy was struggling. Why well, give him an opportunity? Go ahead after him. You know, go after the juggler. Go ahead and bank that five and take control of the match. You know, that was allowed Jeremy at the table, you know, right. with the shot. And uh, Jeremy, Jeremy's got to get it together, though. You know, he hasn't been playing well the last couple of couple of racks. Tough shot, particularly uh, you know, how he's been struggling of late. That's a tough shot. He's able to put it down. Well, he's going to have to take. This is a simple shot, but it's going to be telling as if he can get on the other side of the line to A to the pocket. So he can just go off the side rail and get come back and get position on nine. No, oh, he, he, he don't like it. He don't like that. He just hit that. He's dead straight. He, he, yeah, he didn't like it. He didn't like this shot. Yeah, he's gonna make a, he's gonna make a good shot here. Straight in. He's gonna draw that rock back. 
pretty good stroke there. Nicely executed shot there. Yeah, you can uh, soft draw this, or you can go across table from the raw vantage point. I don't know what he's better off doing here. Oh, he hit it. It looked like he almost caught it on the 50 there for a second. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But he was on that line to where he could have probably gone either way, I think. But uh, this this should be handled easily. That's what time the match again, will We'll be back at 99. <laughs> Exchanging uh, a few friendly words there with uh, referee Ken Schumann. Our other referee, Ken, has stepped in and was, was the pinch hitter there for about a rack. The I tell you what, this was a really nice setup here for a tournament. I mean, it was really professionally done. I really, you know, uh, appreciate the uh, all the work that was done here to get this, put this tournament on, to get it into, you know, to, to, to show it the way they've been showing it. Well, promoter Bonnie Nazat really loves the game of pool, and he wanted to host events that would put pool into the best light possible. And this this event is truly spectacular, and uh, you know we're we're proud to be here, and we're glad to be in an era where somebody like Padi Nazad is coming along. Oh, I don't know the man personally, you know, but uh, for him to take on this something like this, put it together like he's done, he must really have a love for the game, like you say, you know, because he certainly isn't going to make any money with this. You know, he's going to lose quite a bit of money, you know, and he probably understood that going in. Right. Well, uh, furthermore, he even played in this event. Oh, really? Yeah. I won't get into how he fared, but he did play. He loves the play. Good. Does he play one puck as a gamble? That's uh, my kind of man. <laughs> 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 well, the ProPool.com stats coming in here is Jeremy Jones is shooting an 8.23, and Mike DeShane is shooting an 8.89. I see that uh, referee Ken Schumann is giving particular attention to this rack and uh, you know when you basically only have five games left in a whole tournament maximum uh, every rack counts and I'm glad to see that he's doing so when Mr. DeShane comes back I'm sure that he's uh, thinking about how he's going to be breaking these balls I think he's going to hit these balls square. Who'd break is it? Since it's an odd game, it is the man who won the lag, which means it is Mike DeShane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you keep giving me these tests. Yeah, I'll but pass at least, I'm, at least I'm asking you the same question all the time. <laughs> You're just rephrasing <laughs> it. <laughs> What's two plus two? Same thing as two times two. This truly is a beautiful hotel, is it not? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, it's a real nice matter of fact. You know, and this convention center here is, is real nice as, as well, you know. It's a nice spacious room. we got a, nice, a lot of room in between tables. Nice, very nicely decorated. Well, the thing that I was going to say is uh, Frisco, the town that this is in, is only about eight years old. Eight years ago, this was all fields, and it's a booming city, and it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, lot of construction and, and building in this part of the uh, part of Texas, I should say. Right. This is quite uh, this is north of Dallas. Uh, I said 
120 miles or something. Yeah. 25 miles. Uh, the other part of it is Allen. Allen's not too far from here. That's where, that's where my son lives in Allen, Texas. They're building up down around that area as well. They're a little more developed than, than Corinth or right. that's going to be in, in, in Frisco. Nice right. area right here. Hmm. You know, this where Jeremy lives. Gotcha. Well, I can tell you right now, uh, we went down to the Legacy area, Legacy shops, and it's just incredible, incredible. If it hadn't been, you know, 40, 50 mile hour winds, I think it would have been, uh, you know, absolutely perfect. But, uh, just a, a lovely area. This is a great hotel. Uh, body. Uh, Mr. Mazat could not have picked a better location. Where does Mazat live? I believe he's living in Curacao now. Curacao? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. You ever, you ever been to Curacao? No. I, I've been down there. The weather's beautiful down there. Wow, wow, he struck those balls nicely. He hit the one solid. I told you it hit him great, didn't I? He came but back he geared up for action. Come with a, he didn't make a ball to break as well as he struck the one. And as hard as he hit the balls, he didn't get a reward for it. Yeah. Hey, that's pool. And he said to himself, I saw the hit me. You know, he uh, was really unhappy about it. You know. And I don't blame him. Yeah. Six here or something. Maybe. I don't. I don't. I know there's no future in following it, so I think he's got to take his chances with the draw. No, watch out! Watch out! Uh, watch out! Huh? Mm. No, he he may be able to do the field goal position that Danny DiLiberto likes to talk about. Yeah, that's possible. You know. Uh, but then again, then you got to play position from the four to the five. You know, you have an option here. Here's a decision to make. You can go with a high ball and, get, and follow it and get on the other side of the nine. Or you can, like, stop and, and play position and take the cut on the four. I think he's going to choose high cue. Makes more sense. Great oh, shot. <laughs> Threaded that needle just fine. What was uh, the matter there? <laughs> I guess. I, I think if, if we made him swear on a stack of Bibles, I think he was uh, trying to go the other way there. I don't know. I don't know. Really. I think he tried to go in between those two balls. No, I think he was trying to go toward the nine, maybe. Yeah. But now he likes his uh, his position. Now I think that uh, he draws a cue ball back to about the same place, and he has four or five stop shots in a row. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes it's difficult to draw it back when that side pocket comes into play. Mm. You know, that side pocket may uh, be a deterrent of some kind here. So you can dog your stroke a little bit, draw on it. Let's see what it does. You know, that's pretty good. Yeah, no problems. I mean, even if he's not straight in on the seven, he can go off the rail and go towards the eight. No, Keep good. a little angle. You know, this is no problem here. No, nah, this is very simple. Maybe some pieces of chalk on the table. Jeremy had asked referee Ken Schumann to uh, oh. stop the clock. Oh, oh this is not good. He could have gotten trouble. No, that's there. fine. I mean, he, he looked looked like he hit that ball a little roughly, but uh, it fell in. But he's fine right here. Exactly. Talking about chalk, uh, uh, Torres and Homo was telling me there's a, 
company that makes chalk that costs twenty five dollars a cube. I think it's the Kamui chalk. Kamui, yeah. He says you never miss Q with it. Hmm. I'd like to get me a couple cubes of that. I think, I think I would. Yeah, you I'll know. try it out. Yeah, right. Have you ever used it? And how did it make you make the hit feel? Was it like did you feel it in the hit? I guess if you can get past the feel of it and the sound of it, then you can't beat it because how would you like to have a guarantee never to miss Q again? You certainly are worth more or have a lot more than twenty five dollars a cube. Especially if you're playing for, you know, decent money. <laughs> Oh, tell me about it. Looks like Jeremy's going to take the lead here, ten to nine. <laughs> and somebody's in double digits, All right? I think Jeremy's going to take his second break. back from his break. Before he breaks, let me update you on the ProPool.com stats. Jeremy Jones is shooting an 837 and Mike DeShane is shooting an 889. Now do you think he's actually going to hit the break square this time? He's hit left, he's hit right, you know, he's I, all over the place. The answer to that question is I do really think he's going to improve greatly uh, from the last time he broke the balls because he's a real smart player, he's a veteran player, and he knows that that was his undoing the last time he broke the balls. That's how he fell behind, and he's not going to let that happen again. No. Oh, he did. Oh. That's the second. But he's scratching the other side this time. He overcompensated. You know? Exactly. He overcompensated. Well, he's going left and right now. He hit a bunch to the left, and now he's hit a bunch to the right. And he's having a fun, trouble finding that spot. Well, you know, it, it's it's too bad that he had to try to find it this late in the match because he should have been already, you know, zoomed in on it. He should be squatting that oh, right he, Yeah, he, because that's such an important shot, you know, particularly when you're talking about this... Uh, this, these kind of players, upper echelon players, they, you know, that break is such a big, big shot. Right. Mike is uh, running around the table and ended up pretty good here.
He can draw this ball out of there. Let's see how he does it. Good shot. Good stroke. Yeah, I've, been, I, I've noticed uh, his style of play is that uh, he likes to go over that extra rail. I mean, he likes to put a little more stroke into his shots, uh, opposed to, like, killing balls and stuff like that. That's not his game. He's, he has a power game, this guy. He really does have a power game. Yeah. That's the way he plays. There's that funny angle again, you know, on, on the side pocket. It's so crucial sometimes when, you know, to select the right pocket to play position for, even though it may appear that that would be the correct pocket, you have to be really precise. Yeah. You fall off a little bit, then you have... And then you're shooting a six past a point in the side pocket. No, 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 not only that, now going from the six to the eight might be a problem. <laughs> you know? You, you, you might have a smaller position zone than what you wanted to do. So, you know, this, this, is a, of this, rack. this is a pretty worthy note. Be careful when you're playing position for the side pockets. You can't really get careless when you play position for the side pockets because a little offline, you know, for position for the side can cost you the rack. A few, few inches could mean, a, you know, the end of your game, the end of your run. Look what he's done there. Oh, oh, that, look at this. That is just horrible there. This is, uh, I mean, he may even foul the ball altogether. I think he did. And, I mean, I mean, he's, and Jeremy's calling him on and... Uh, Jeremy's asking if it's a foul. He's looking right at Mike right now, and Mike's just continuing to shoot. Well, you know, sometimes that's the responsibility of the, the, uh, the referee yeah. to get on top of a shot. When you're elevating like that, like he was, I think it's the responsibility of the referee exactly. to get on top of that shot, to take a better look at what's happening, because it's, you know, you're, you're doing something... Uh, Unorthodox, or whatever you might call it, with the with the shot. So uh, you're in pro close proximity with the cue ball and the rail and uh, all kind of and stuff. If, and if you're Jeremy and you don't see the referee take any initiative, you might want to call him over. And this is what Jeremy wants: is back at the table, almost a carbon copy of the shot that Mike just had. Yeah, this is the kind of a shot where you really want to. You really know you have to hit this shot thinly because you don't want to miss it on the on the thick side. So when you have that mindset, shooting shots like this, you normally overcut the ball. Right. Okay. Now, but if you're in dead punch, if you're in good stroke, you hit the center of the pocket. Okay. But this late in the match, you know, every game is so important. It's nine to eight. You really don't want to undercut this shot. So you may, once again, he may overcompensate and overcut the shot. If he misses it, I look for him to overcut it. Right. Now, the problem with this shot is you, you really can't, you either have to hit it with a hard speed or a soft speed, one or the other. You can't hit it in between. He's right. going to hit it with a soft speed because he's not going to want the one to come back across. Golly. Oh, he really butchered well, it. He, he basically, uh, yeah. He hit that every way bad. He butchered it. He, butchered he wasn't it. ready to shoot that shot. That's the only excuse or reason I can see why he did what he did. He wasn't ready to shoot that shot. He was thinking about a couple different things, and he shot that shot without really being prepared to shoot it. And Mike's going to fire at this bank. He's going to kick it down near the hole. <laughs> How are they rolling, folks? Jeremy's, uh, I can't believe that it's 10-10 right now. Well, he had a great opportunity to, uh, to take a two-game lead. You know, and, uh, and I was sort of surprised to see him hit it as badly as he did and undercut it. You don't undercut that shot. You can't undercut that shot. Well, that, that shot has to be hit thinly enough to, if it's missed, to be missed on the other side of the pond. Yeah. Well, there was That's enough space right. there. That was a thing. There really was enough. I mean, when he hit that ball, I don't know what he was thinking of. You can ask him about that shot after this match is over, whether he wins or loses. Yeah. It's better to ask him if he wins, though. 
Yeah. I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna focus on the positive things that he's doing because that's what he should be doing. I think right now the positive things that he is doing are limited to just a few areas. He's, he's relying on his experience and he's adjusting. He has. What is it, like a Chinese sort of fortune there you got there? It's exactly. It is my cheat sheet notes from the ProPill.com oh. staff. Keep, they keep uh, passing little flips of paper back and forth. I thought they were getting from a Chinese fortune cookie. <laughs> Well, they were going to the flashlights. Uh, Jeremy Jones is uh, shooting 814 and DeShane. Conf Confucius say you should always play the professional side of the ball. Miss it professionally. <laughs> <laughs> and DeShane, of course, is shooting an 880. And it just came to tie up the match. Okay, the Confucius last time he broke say. the balls, he didn't make a ball to break, but he hit him well. This time he did pocket a ball, I believe it was, yeah, or two balls, no, four, no, one ball to break. And he's got a nice shot on the one. And it's getting pretty late in the match. Every game here is really, really big. And now we're playing two out of three. Right. Yes, ten Who has ten. the hill first in an alternating break? Who has the hill first? It's pretty big. Well... Not a whole bunch of problems after he makes his two ball, is there? Yeah, the, the balls are spread nicely over the table, and it just seems like they're, you know, one ball is connected to the next. Uh, the three to the five seems to be... Uh, it's just the eight ball. It's the only thing that he'll make a decision on in this whole rack, I bet. I don't know how that eight ball is uh, positioned in relation to that side, but the seven ball positioned at the other end of the table... You would think that he was going to be with play position for the corner. Oh, my. Oh, my. He, uh, well, I tell you, he breathed differently when he shot that ball. He might have missed it. Yeah, he's... Uh... He's going to stretch a little bit here, I think. So he's going to stretch here. I don't know if he likes this. He might have mm -hmm. to play for the corner. Looks like he's going to play for the corner. He gave himself a healthy angle so he can come across the table and not have to worry about yeah. too much. Well, <laughs> a little too much of an angle, if you ask me. Because the nine ball was positioned closely enough to that corner for him to... Uh, that with a better shot on the A, but it didn't hurt him. This is pretty yeah, straight, but I think he can work this angle fairly well. He'll probably just slide up off the left-hand side rail here with a little left English. Looks like he has a hair of an angle down towards the 10. Look at this. He looks like he's drawing it. Oh, he did have the angle. Seems to be breathing like he has a breathing exercise going on out there. You know what I mean? I mean, sometimes when you're under a lot of pressure, there's a certain type of uh, breathing that you can use that, that'll help you. Yeah, you know, those good. deep cleansing breaths and things of that nature. You know, get rid of that pressure. And I think that's what he's doing. I, I've noticed he was... <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to do breathing uh, techniques, but I never did them that way. Because Johnny Archer kind of mentioned that to me. He says that, uh, he said that um, he, he breathes a certain way before he shoots certain shots that relaxes him. Mm. Mm -hmm. I used to right. take deep breaths, hold it, and I'd raise my shoulders and I'd release it and drop my shoulders. And it gave me a... a Were you a, talking about playing pool? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm still talking about playing pool. <laughs> what did you think I was talking about? Oh, no, I thought you were talking about sex or something. Oh, no. no, okay. <laughs> Release my shoulders, got the knee, then get. Okay, Jeremy, this is uh, no time to miss hit the break. You're scratching the side again. You're not going to get another opportunity in this tournament. 
Last two times you broke the ball. You scratched to the side. It was to the left side, and then it was to the right side. Okay. You have to break the balls well this time. That is a must. So the ProPool.com stats have shifted a little bit with Jones going at 814 and DeShane going at 891. That's much better. That was much better. I don't know if you're going to get rewarded. Oh, how about that? Six ball. How about that? I mean, he would have never got that ball had he not struck that one ball solidly as he did. So that's the reward he got for hitting the one ball solidly. Well, back at the ranch, though, uh, he's got a small angle up table and a deuce is all the way down by the 10, and the 4 or 5 look like they're tied up slightly. Well, he never, you know, he, he wasn't promised a rose garden, so therefore he's got some work ahead of him here, and it starts from the 1 to the 2. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think uh, that he's uh, glad that he's at the table instead of the shade. Exactly. Exactly. And in the one thing that i got to say is even if he runs out this rack, Shane, being the winner of the lag, gets the hill hill break. Okay, now that, that shot he just shot on the one, that wasn't an easy shot. He had to elevate and he didn't have much angle, so therefore he created the angle for, through his elevation and his perfect hit on that one ball to get where he ended up. Now the two to the three sounds somewhat automatic, but the three to the four, there's a problem. He may have to end up playing a billiard four or five. That's what I was going to say. He may end up trying to get back to the center of the table so he can billiard the four or five, or the five off the four. So he knew going into this rack after shooting, after making the ball on the break, that he had a lot of work in this rack, a lot of work. That's how bad you want it. Now, this is a big shot coming up here. He, he, I don't believe the four passes the five, but the billiard's available. too far. He'll lose his market on that billiard. Mm. Yeah, he doesn't want to go too far because going too far over makes this billiard play a lot more difficult. And and not only that, it, it it's much more difficult to control the four balls well. Now he may end up rolling the cue right onto the five and making sure that the four doesn't hang. Well, he's going like he, to play the billiard here. Okay. Right? Let the four passes. <laughs> Oh. He didn't have much of a pocket. I'm really surprised to see him do that. that was, I think that was a mental mistake. I don't think he was supposed to try that ball at all. Well, you have to give him the benefit of the doubt because you know if, he, if he's going to shoot the shot, he's... It went by. Yeah, absolutely. And you really got to take advantage of that opportunity. You really can't, you really can't get past him there. You got to take advantage of it. Let's be truthful. Even if it... If it's tight and it's that tight, wouldn't you still want to think about playing the carom? If well, I think he really committed tight. himself because he wouldn't buy that. He wouldn't buy that carom. You know, he didn't have the real natural carom on the four to the five. He bypassed that line. Right. Okay. In order for him to play that four or five carom, he would have had it really had to hit it really good. So therefore, he probably would have had to hit that carom as good as he had to hit the four. But the four gave him a natural position. I think we're going to. I think this is going to be the last game of the match here. I think these are the last three balls of this tournament. Well, Mike has been bothering me for the cover of Inside Pool for a long time. Yeah, I've put my picture on it. I'm trying to sell magazines here, sir. <laughs> oh, excuse me.
think referee uh, is informing him. Yes! And just like that, our 2011 Ultimate Ten Ball Championship Men's Champion. Well, you know, you have to give your uh, give your props to Jeremy because you know uh, he's not the type of a player that plays in all these events where Deshane is. You know, he's taken a lot of time off of the game, but you know, he's came back and he's really made a great showing. I mean, he went through a tough field here to get to the position he ended up in. You know, with the hot seat, went to the final. So uh, you have to really applaud him for his, uh, his uh, efforts in this, in this tournament. Oh yeah, I think both players need applauded. I think Mike is going to get his his applause because he is the winner. Jeremy, uh, great showing this event. Great showing. And uh, I just wanted to say they're going to have the award ceremony. Uh, we're probably going to broadcast the award ceremony here for everybody. So if you want to stick around and watch these players, the top three players are getting medals as well as a check. And uh, Mr. Nazat has... Uh, made some special medals. I've uh, got a great uh, jewelry company to make them. And I forget the name of the company right now, and I don't know why it is. I should have wrote it down. But uh, hear from him. My, hear from him. Yeah, I will hear from him. It's in the press releases. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we would love you folks to stick around. We appreciate you tuning in. If you need to uh, get some shut eye and get the week kicked off uh, early we understand uh, these videos will be available on our youtube channel at youtube.com forward slash inside pool mag i wanted to thank billy and cardona for coming out and uh, hanging out with us and commentating in the final there's one good way of thanking me okay is uh, no <laughs> 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 no, I really, yeah, I really enjoy doing commentary because, uh, you know, I just enjoy talking about the game and, and, you know, and trying to uh, educate and inform people on what's happening out there and, and uh, make it more interesting for everyone. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I want to uh, let our viewers know that, uh, yeah, basically, uh, we enjoyed ourselves this weekend. We are proud to be part of this great great event I, I, I'm really happy to see that Bonnie Nazat has come around and you know decided to, to put his efforts towards billiards it's a, truly a great era and I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to be doing in the future yeah I, that, that's wonderful that's good you know. seems to be a real pretty good promoter and a, a one that this game definitely needs definitely. definitely we don't get too many like this folks so you know, any support you can you can lend, uh, by all means. And if you want to shoot Mr. Nazada uh, an email, I'm sure you can do so over at ultimatetemball.com. But folks, we're going to set down our mics and let uh, relinquish everything to the uh, people that are in the arena giving away the medals. Thanks, folks. Good night.
right hand for 
it doesn't mean this is exactly the many things that I as a class act has represented our game awfully well for many, many years. And it was an honor to have you here, Jeremy, which you could have been more of a little different color here. But uh, congratulations on behalf of everybody here at Health of the Ten Ball. And Jeremy Jules, second place in the